So this video is going to be about infusion, about how the temperature of the resin and the temperature of the part, in this case a warm table, really affects how things flow. What I'm going to try to do is to make a part without flow media and use this call plate made out of a piece of plastic shelf liner with some release on it because it's something I had to be able to see through and really check out what's happening as the infusion progresses and leave a nice surface so that the peel ply texture doesn't affect uh, my ability to see what's actually happened inside the part. And it's pretty thin, uh, just a couple millimeters thick, and straight e-glass, some stitched biaxial, it's quasi-iso um, and balanced, so it should be it's a pretty typical type of laminate. And bagging it down, here and this is on a hot table. The table is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see the heated up there um, and a hot table is a great thing for infusion because it lets you control what's going on a lot better. So here I'm going to put ProSet. This is fast because it's more fun that way and it is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit or floor temperature um, by concrete floor and mixing it up. I'm not going to do any degassing or anything using my little 3D printed infusion clamp. Uh, and the, the idea is that the resin in the pot is cool and so it won't gel as fast but as soon as it hits the table and starts flowing through the part the viscosity will be much lower and it should flow further uh, without the aid of a flow media like um, shade cloth or soric or a you know, core with grooves in it. And um, you can see here the very cold resin pot and the warm table. So it started out flowing pretty well. I marked it about once every minute and then I lost track and just sort of marked it about every minute. and. As it got about a third of the way through, it started to slow down. I'm not sure whether this was because of permeability uh, or resin flow. I got the sense that the inlet hose could have been bigger. It was a pretty small hose. And here, the next couple minutes really slows down. And I started marking it every five minutes. So this, is, this next mark will be a five minute mark. And I'm writing down the temperature of the surface and also the temperature of the pot of resin. So I can see as the exotherm starts to build up heat in the pot, I have a sense of where things are. Um, and so the pot's warming up and the surface is really hot. And you can almost see the resin gel. It starts to turn yellow right on the front, the resin that has been in the part longest sliding along the top of that hot table is gelling pretty hard at this point about half an hour in which um, is actually longer than I thought I would get and by now the resin in the pot is also um, starting to exotherm and build up a lot of heat and I have to take what was left and put it outdoors. So the next day I'll be molding it. You can see I made about 300 millimeters total uh, which is better than I thought I would do. I think if I had a bigger hose and more flow, I would have gotten more resin into it faster, and that would have helped. I'll try that again. Um, the cold plate came off really nicely and left a pretty shiny surface underneath there. The cold plate very thin and wasn't ideal for leaving a flat surface. You can definitely see the fiber bundles have pushed it up into little waves which is fine for this situation. I just wanted it so that it would be visually clear and you could definitely see the gradient from clear to yellow as you get closer to the resin front and I'm told that the yellowing is just a consequence of faster cure, more exotherm and that it does not affect the mechanical properties of the resin and right at the resin front you can see just that last bit of air that didn't get make it out right as the resin gelled. So here's the trimmed up panel 
You can see the call plate side just nice and shiny and definitely wavy from the, the fiber bundles. It's, uh, didn't quite get a 300 millimeter square out of it. And the Teflon side is a bit more dull, but it's very clear. There are almost no bubbles anywhere in it, uh, except right at the, the vacuum front where it started to gel. And uh, it was a really neat way to check out just how much heat affects viscosity and to try and get a, um, an infused part that didn't have flow media. So thanks for checking it out.